Hello, and welcome to this edition of the CSIAC podcast series. This is a multi-part series entitled Fifth Generation Cellular, conducted by CSIX MEs, Dr. Carl Kutcher and Dr. Paul Losowitz. This series will explore a broad range of aspects regarding 5G wireless networks. This initial podcast episode will describe the basics of 5G, including the evolution of this wireless technology. It will touch on the potential applications it will enable and examine spectrum issues associated with 5G. Hello all, this is Paul Losowitz from the Cybersecurity and Information Systems Analysis Center, brought to you by the Defense Technical Information Center IAC program. Today we are having an, a, a short interview with Dr. Carl Kutcher of Idaho National Laboratory on 5G Cellular. Hey Paul, nice to be with you today. Uh, we're, we're coming to you from our personal COVID studios, but I'm looking forward to the conversation. Outstanding. So, Carl, uh, there's been a lot of information being uh, circulated amongst DOD on the impact of 5G for future RDT&E for, for uh, Department of Defense. Can you give us some insight on background information on 5G and then probably uh, eventually we'll discuss what impact that will have on RDT&E with DOD and the future. Fantastic, Paul, I'd love to. So let me go to our first slide here. This is kind of a broad outline of what we'd like to be talking about today. So I kind of like to cover a little bit about 5G and as Paul said, we're gonna get into a few specifics about how 5G works and then talk of differences between maybe some terms you might have heard in 5G and how they relate to how these things are going to change how we do things in the military, how we're gonna do things in general life. So let's talk for a second about what 5G really is. So we've all heard about the 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G cell phones. We've all had different cell phones. But in general, 5G is just an evolution of the cellular revolution that we've been seeing over the years. And just this year in 2020, we're finally going to see 5G really roll out uh, into the ecosystem. It's going to be a while before 5G's promise of all of these great things that 5G is supposed to be doing are going to be realized. But the first things about the faster speeds, the broader bandwidth, the faster response times are starting to be rolled out in some test cities. And when we go forward from there, things are gonna start moving pretty quickly between now and 2021. So when I said that 5G is an evolution, let me dive into where 5G is on the evolutionary track. Mm -hmm. There's an organization that controls 5G, and it's called the Third Generation Partnership Project. They really create the standards for 5G, and each one of their standards they roll out is called a release. Or in the bottom of this chart, you see REL 15, REL 16, REL 17. 5G actually started with the first release of REL 15. And industry kind of forced the 3GPP to give an early release so they could get going on it. This early release brings into focus tighter band or larger bandwidth, tighter uh, what we call latency, so the response time is a lot faster, and uh, better ways to handle the frequency space. Uh, but really, that first link or that first release didn't do anything to change the actual backbone or all of the communications and the speeds that needed to be out there for all of 5G to be implemented. So we're calling this the release 15, and it's also called release 15 uh, early release is what it's actually called. Now, you might have heard this as 5G non-standalone, which is yes. kind of the industry term for it. Um, 
The reason it's called non-standalone is because the only thing they did was they replaced the end radios in the entire network so that you have a little bit better radio at, at the cell tower, but all the rest of the network is all 4G. So you get better bandwidth, you get a little bit better response, but all the things that 5G needs to make everything happen aren't going to be specified until release 15 final. When that comes out, and we don't even have the equipment for this yet, but the standard's been done. When that equipment gets released in late 2020, maybe 2021 because of COVID, then we'll see the full 5G standalone system being rolled out. And when that comes out, then you're gonna start seeing a lot of the really great improvements. But 5G has also got two pre-planned product improvements already on the books and they're already working on them. So release 16, which should be done within the year, and then it's gonna take them probably six months to a year before all these things are implemented. That's when we start bringing in the really fast response times, uh, things that allow uh, vehicle to infrastructure connectivity, the massive internet of things, uh, and this, uh, what we call computing at the edge to be realized. Then after 16, we'll go to 17, and 17 is gonna be a huge revolution where they're really gonna bring in some major bandwidth improvements and some big improvements to how much speed and how much latency we can get in the system. Okay, so Carl, the uh, 3GPP is an international consortium, correct? It is, Paul. That's a good comment. Uh, 3GPP is made up of all of the countries that use cellular service. Uh, it's an amazing organization. If you look at the fact that they control trillions of dollars of enterprise across the planet, and that all of the countries that it's really all the vendors within those countries get a seat at the table. So the U.S. vendors are all there. Small companies are there. But we also got some people that uh, we have to keep an eye on, like the Chinese vendors and stuff like that. But they vote on the standards and how the standards are going to be implemented. Once that standard comes out, then it's up to industry to actually execute that in the equipment that goes out. Okay. So... Let's go on and uh, get a little more information on the frequency bands, et cetera, and infrastructure. Great. Let's go do that, Paul. <clears throat> Before I do that, though, <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a really quick look at some of the things that 5G is going to promise us. So if you look at this chart, uh, Qualcomm gave us this chart. We love this chart. If the 5G new radio system, which is standalone and non-standalone, has three kind of big areas that they're looking at for how they're, what missions they're gonna be working on. So mission critical control systems, enhanced mobile broadband, so that's you know better bandwidth, better connectivity, and this internet of things. So go all the way out to the edge and you'll see all of the different things that 5G is supposed to support, but then come one back in. So if you go up to about the one o'clock position, you see mission critical applications, healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, and you see strong security, ultra high reliability, ultra low latency. These things are revolutionary concepts that 5G is gonna bring in. And whereas the current even 4G system may have a 50 or 100 millisecond latency time, that means from the time that I tell a computer program, please execute this, it might take a tenth of a second for that to actually come back to me. If I'm working on an information processing program, it probably isn't a big deal. A little frustrating, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. But if I'm controlling a robotic telesurgery arm, that tenth of a second could be an eternity. We want to get that down to uh, within one millisecond or a thousandth of a second. And that kind of thing with super high reliability and great bandwidth are the kinds of things that 5G is going to give us. Another thing going down to about the 430 position there, uh, five o'clock or so, is something called deep awareness. And for these networks to be 
better networks to organize themselves so that they have the capability of making decisions on the best way to set up the bandwidth and the latency in the network, they have to have information on how the network works. Well, 5G for the first time is going to give the network the capability of having that awareness because all that data is going to be collected and organized so things like machine learning and AI can be applied to improving the network. Um, going back around, you see things that will be enabled that will be super important, especially for big cities or even for the Department of Energy for very high density research experiments like the, the National Collider, where we've got a million sensors on that collider, is it allows us to do ultra high density of devices. This, we're talking about a million devices per square kilometer. And that might sound kind of silly, but when you figure that we're talking about everything that you own having a 5G capability, your refrigerator, mm -hmm. your toaster, your door lock, your security system, your wristwatch, your iPad, uh, heart monitors, blood pressure monitors, all of these things are going to be using 5G. And when you put high density housing like New York, a million devices per kilometer gets to be you know something that's going to be realized that we're going to have to deal with so this in general is 5g and what 5g is going to deliver to us okay so a little later we'll come back and talk about ai assisted quality of service management for the entire network right we'll touch on that absolutely Paul. okay now let's talk about the frequencies for 5G, and I'll talk a little bit about who's doing what, and then we'll go into a little bit about what the differences in the frequencies do for us. So that what you see in the chart in front of you is a listing of all of the countries and how they intend to use 5G from a spectrum standpoint. Historically, all of the spectrum that we've been using for the 3G phones has all been down in the 700, 800, 900 megahertz area. Once we went to 4G, they started using spectrum that was in the 1 1.8, 1 1.4 to 1.8 gigahertz range. This is what gave 5 or 4G a lot of the capability it had. But we need more. There's this insatiable desire for more bandwidth and more spectrum. So what's happening is that they are asking the government to relinquish its spectrum, and that's where the spectrum auctions are coming from. But even that wasn't enough. So all of these countries are going to spectrums that we've never used before, like the 24 to 30 gigahertz spectrum, which is shown about halfway to maybe five-eighths of the way through the chart. And they're even talking 37 to 50 gigahertz in that spectrum. Wow. The advantage of that spectrum is that you can put really high data rates, but there's a couple disadvantages, which I'll talk about in just a second. The other important thing about this chart is the fact that not every country is doing the exact same thing. If you look at Korea on there and Japan, they've got a whole series of spectra that are non-standard to the rest of the world. Why is this important to the DOD? The DOD operates around the world globally, and right. we are going to need to be interoperable with the 5G systems in those countries, whether they're going to be used to support military operations that's working with us, or they may be used to support military operations that will be against us. But we have to understand how the 5G environment works, and we've got to have some systems interoperable in just about every one of these systems. Which is important for acquisition, military acquisition. And it's also important for testing, Paul. It's important that we are able to operate and evaluate all of our systems so that we know they're going to operate worldwide. Outstanding. Thank you. On behalf of the CSIAC, we would like to thank you for viewing this podcast. We hope you found the content informative and useful. If you would like to provide feedback or comments, please visit our website at www.csiac.org, where you can also find additional content to review. Thank you. Did you know that CSIAC offers free monthly webinars featuring experts in the areas of cybersecurity, software engineering, modeling and simulation, and knowledge management? 
come see leading industry professionals talk about industry practices and leading research. Make sure to visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars in order to subscribe to our mailing list and see when the next webinar series is available. There you can also watch previous webinar series to catch up. Visit www.csiac.org forward slash webinars.